I just wanted to make it clear this is the third um, 10 minute spot from our hour videotaping of starting a young horse for the first time preparing them for the ride. I'd like to just point out that we normally don't use a saddle anymore. We, we start, I say normally because not unless you prefer it. Um, our whole approach is that we get on the horse bareback. The horse comes to pick us up off the mounting block. We're on them bareback. They get used to us. And if you ever want a saddle, we will definitely um, bring that into the mix of things. But after us just comes the bareback pad. But the reason why I wanted you all to see how we start this process is I get so many questions about starting horses under saddle and my horse bucks. And I just want to let you know that it shouldn't be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. And also for a lot of you that, are, that, that don't have the experience of working with so many horses like we have, um, you know, I want you to be safe. And if safety means that you start your horse, your personal horse out for the first time, with a saddle, then please do. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm just kind of trying to talk to all of you, um, but also know that if you send your horse to us to be started or restarted, that we, you know, we start with our bodies and, and us and then the bareback pad. And very rarely do we use a saddle. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, all of our horses know saddles. And when we go on long trail rides, sometimes we use a saddle, sometimes we don't. Uh, the purpose of this is that you know you know what you're looking for and, and hopefully I can help you identify how Budar is talking to me and what his body language means that allows me to move forward and when I know not to move forward because again this is all about creating a wonderful positive learning experience for him and one where he stays engaged with me and trusts me and asks questions and doesn't just go into self-preservation mode which is fight or flight yeah, I don't, I want this horse to feel like he belongs. So that's, um, we'll begin. So in the previous episode, um, Budar accepted the saddle beautifully and I just moved him around while staying connected and collected and looking at me. And I'm just waiting, I'm just breathing and let, and you know, just checking him out. It's great that he's doing a lot of licking and chewing. That means he's thinking. Um, I'd like to move him around with that saddle and um, I definitely do not want to encourage any bucking. Meaning when I bring him up into a trot, which I will be doing, you're going to see him get really tight. And he's going to think about it. And I'm going to bring him right back down and out of that. So, you know, these, this will happen. I mean, the tendency for a horse to be like, oh my gosh, what is this thing around me? I'm a prey animal. Is this a predator? It's very real. And the key is, is the connection that he has, your leadership in that moment. So I'm just letting him move around. Everything's fine. He's doing fabulous, but I'm not going to, uh, I don't want to be overly confident with that before I get on. So I definitely want to get, he's just crowding my space because it makes him feel more secure. That's okay. He's not trying to push me around. He's feeling... You know, remember, horses are, are herd animals, and it's safety in numbers. So he's just not sure, um, and that's okay. So I want to be able to definitely be able to walk and trot this horse under saddle before I get on. One, I want to see where his emotional agility is as I bring him up in speed. Does it trigger his adrenaline? Does it trigger his prey instinct for self-preservation into a flight or fight mode, which is bucking? <laughs> I mean, this, these are all my, my safety checkpoints right now. So he's staying connected. He's got an inside arc. See how he keeps looking at me? That is perfect. He keeps checking in with me. Believe me, you want this. So if anything starts to go wrong, he's going to look to you for safety, emotional safety, instead of taking that... Um, choosing that direction on his own. And when they choose it on their own, it's a fight or flight, and you don't exist. And that's how accidents happen. So again, positive, lots of great. He wanted to come in and feel reassured. That was a beautiful shoulder in. I love it. Leaning into me. Yep, his lower lip is loose. Very important. You guys, if your horse's lower lip is tight and pursed throughout this, they are worried and stressed. You need to be really careful. 
and I'm checking all my points right now. Like when I go to get on, is he gonna give? Should he start bucking or running around? Is he gonna give? Not that I want that to happen, but it could happen. Is he, how late is he gonna be? Is he gonna respond to this pressure? Should I need to bend him and hurt and get off of him? So these are all my little checkpoints. Very nice. Nice. So again, that lower lip is relaxed. I'm just taking a break, just hanging out with them. He's checking out the horses in the field. I'm just, in my intention was very clear. I want him to stay connected to me. And I want to reassure him, give him that reassurance. All right. I'm checking in with myself too, you guys. I'm, I sat down purposefully to ground myself because I know that I'm going to ask him to come up in transition and eventually be able to ride. And I need to make sure I don't have a lot of butterflies or nervousness that if I feel any energy like that, is it me or is it him that I'm feeling of? So I, breathing is so important. Breathing, going slow, and I will sit down or squat if I need to take my, release my energy and really ground myself. It's really important. So, so far, just the little increases in speed, the transition work, he's, he's handling that well. But we're not done yet. Ask him out my space and around me, the send. Now here's the trot, one, two, one, two. And he gets tight somewhere around here, um, if I remember correctly. And I haven't looked at this since last fall when it was filmed. But I thought there might be either in this episode or the next one to come where he got a little tight before I got on. <clears throat> He's doing so well. I'm so pleased with him. It doesn't surprise me, but at the same time, you know, they are horses. And should something spook him right now, he is a horse. We have not had any experience together with all of this. So I'm really excited. Really want him to come down from that trot. Yeah, I'm real excited about that. I just keep asking him to come down and relax with me. Remember, I trust Budar. I know Budar and I know myself. And that's why you see me squatting a lot. Um, and I'm in a position where if I felt this horse was extremely um, flighty and nervous and not sure, I would not be doing that because that would put me in a very vulnerable, dangerous position. If something were to spook him, they'd run me over. But I, I know Budar and I know me and I'm quite confident when I do that. Okay, there we go. There we go. Something spooks him, and I shut him down. That's what I remember. So something spooked him from behind. Remember, it's 25, 30 mile an hour winds, and I just shut him down. I just pulled on the rope and breathed out and shut him down. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, he's still a horse. You've just got to be very aware of what horses can do and how to be able to work through exercises like these that are going to help you test them for the lack of a better word test your connection test his willingness to stay focused and partner up test his emotional agility does he is he really spooky and fly off the handle easily or do, is he pretty thoughtful through the process of when is adrenaline so i'm going to ask we're going to go through that space again that spooked him that's all good there's the trot excellent and I'm not looking to move him around this round pen, you know, three, four, five, six times at a trot because I know, I know that he's a horse and horses are not going to take to that saddle very well. Meaning if I put him loose in this round pen and round penned him like a lot of traditional horsemen do, horsemen and horsewomen do, the propensity for a horse to buck with the saddle for the first time is 100%. 
I don't want that. I don't want to create that. I don't want to ride that. So I'm changing the whole experience. Keep him connected. Keep him asking questions. Allow him to figure this out. Give him the space and the time to trust you and to not worry about this. It doesn't have to be that way. So I'm going to keep asking him. Yep, good. Here and there for a trot and shut him down. reason why I only ask for the trot in short little half circles or quarter circles is because I want to help this horse um, manage his emotions. I know for a fact that when you ask for a horse to speed up, you naturally trigger their adrenaline. And it's called emotional agility. If they can't handle that transition into a higher speed, if they can't handle it, then they're going to go into flight or fight basically go out of their mind. I want to make sure that when I ask for that higher transition, he can come back down immediately into a calm state of mind and that I am helping him in that process and that he's learning how to do it to himself. So this is beautiful. I'm asking him to stay focused. See the ear on me? That's excellent. The wind is amazingly strong so that he's looking at him his ears and his eyes he's looking behind him like oh my gosh what is that and that was the same area that scared him there's some some gravel over there and, and some areas that he can't see around so as a prey animal he's like oh my gosh is something going to come jumping out at me it's just really awesome he's very relaxed still lower lip is good it's just been great leaning into me for comfort that's all good foot cocked all good. I'm just checking everything out, coming to the other side. So here we are. We're just about wrapping up this episode. I'm tapping on the saddle. want to make sure that he's checking in with that noise and not afraid of it. Thank you, and I look forward to the next one.